This is for my lunch today as I preach so I can get nourishment to finish up. I think it's about a three-hour sermon. I don't want to slip out when I bow my head to pray, okay? This is for the sake of illustration this morning. Can you see these? What are these? Can you see this? It's an, and you can't see this. Some of you may with a keen eye. This is a snicker bar. All right. Which one, if you had a choice to eat first, would you eat? That's what I thought. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I used to hate green beans. But when I went to Bible school, I had to learn to eat them every day. And today, right now, if you put before me and said, green beans and a steak, you ask which one would I eat? I'd eat both of them. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Psalm 34. I'm going to read a verse. You're going to read a verse. If you're able, stand. If you can't, remain seated. Stand with me. I'm going to read the first. You'll read the, I'm reading verse 1, then you 2, then me 3, then you 4. We're going to go through verse number 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me all my fears. They looked upon him, and they were lightened. Their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried... And the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all of his trouble. The angel Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see, the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Father, please make me a blessing to your people today. Lord, we've been engaged in so many different activities that are enjoyable around the holiday seasons and Oftentimes we come to church and it's hard to get our minds on things and our affections where they need to be. But I pray this morning the blessed Holy Spirit of God would come over this place like he did at Pentecost. And put a fire in our bosoms again, in our hearts again, in our will for you again. Speak to me and speak through me into every heart that's here. I pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen. Be seated please. Excuse me for revisiting a couple of old stories, but for the sake of illustration and sermon this morning, that's what I'll do. I want to interest you in the text this morning in verse number 8. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Say that with me. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. One more time. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <laughs> Have you ever anticipating eating something that when you got it, it just went flat on you? Has that ever happened to you? Uh, sometime back... They were advertising this wonderful chicken sandwich. It's amazing how many new ways you can fix chicken. Every week someone's got it new. Every week there's some new hamburger. Have you noticed that? But this one seems so like it's going to be so delicious and seems so wonderful that I said, the next time I drive by that drive through restaurant, I'll get me one of those chicken sandwiches and I'll bite down that thing. And I, my mouth was already watering. I got there, ordered a chicken sandwich. I sat down, took a bite, and I couldn't bite through it. It was like leather. I was totally disappointed in that taste. Years ago when I was a boy growing up, I must have been less than a teenager, probably 10 or 11 years of age. I, <laughs> my kids will tell you that, that I have one favorite saying I ask. They'll say, Daddy, do you want some? What will I say, kids? Just one bite. I'll say, just one bite is all I want. And so uh, I'll find myself sometime when I was a kid going in Mama's refrigerator and just grabbing something that was in there and eating it. Well, one day I was walking through there, I will, I'll remember this as long as I live, it's that she had something pink in there that I thought was icing. Well, I stuck my finger in it. You don't use a spoon or a fork at your own house. <laughs> I stuck my finger in it, put it on my tongue, and it wasn't icing. I don't know what it was. I didn't ever tell my mother I did it, and thank God I never got sick. It wasn't what I thought it was. And I know you've heard me tell this, and I have to laugh about this morning, but it just goes, fits in so well. I hadn't even planned on telling it. Years ago, we were coming back from Canada, and we stopped in Toledo, Ohio, and got off there at the exit and was going to get some gasoline. And we saw a place called the Ponderosa Restaurant. The first one I've ever seen in my life, this is many years ago, 
And we went in, and it was all you could eat. You paid a certain price. You have all you eat off of this uh, buffet bar and all the drink you want and everything. Uh, and the first thing I walked over there, and I saw this yellow substance in a bowl. And I had, there was a spoon in it, and you could, you could actually dip it. And I thought, this has to be banana pudding. And I got me a big old spoonful, put it on my plate. It seemed awful thick, but I thought, well, those Yankees don't know how to fix banana pudding anyway. Right? And so I put it on my plate. I walk over and I sit down. And I take a spoon, a big spoon, because I like it, put it in my mouth. And it was not banana pudding. It was whipped butter. <laughs> I literally had to get up, scrape it off my tongue, go to the bathroom, wash my tongue with towels to get my taste buds back for the meal. It, <laughs> now, you may have done dumb things, too. You just don't talk about them. <laughs> Amen? How many of you have ever eaten cornflakes in your life? Cornflakes. Eaten cornflakes. All right. And uh, cornflakes. Did you know that years ago... Cornflakes are one of the first breakfast cereal to come out. One of the first ones that came out. And also, it had kind of like almost a monopoly on the market for some times. And then they started creating other cornflakes or other cereal food to eat. And they've taken kind of a back seat right now to cereals. As a matter of fact, I saw something. I don't know why I was watching this, but it would be strange to even come up this week. I was watching a news program, and it, it talked about they have now they have chocolate Cheerios, honey Cheerios. So if you, don't get, if you run across any, get me a box and bring it to me. I'll tell you how they taste. <laughs> and they've got, they've got check mix now with chocolate in them also. But there is a rumor going around that chocolate lowers cholesterol. I started the rumor. <laughs> when other cereals come out, though, what they wanted to do, that cornflakes was losing their market. So in the early 1990s, cornflakes did something. Here's what I want to preach about this morning. They came out with a commercial that said, taste them again for the first time. They were trying to get people again to taste and see that cornflakes were good. You can make your mind up about that or not. But try them again for the first time. I'm speaking to many people in this room this morning. I believe that you've tasted salvation. You know what it's like to be saved. I'm speaking to many people this morning, you've tasted the mercies of God in times of failure. I'm speaking to many of you that in times of sickness and adversity, you've found the Lord is good. You've tasted the Lord is good. I'm speaking to some this morning that with a new challenge on your heart, that this year I want to challenge you about the things of God to taste them again for the first time. Years ago, in a small town, a doctor came by the town whose name was Mr. Sweeney. I'm sorry, the doctor, his name is not given in the story. Mr. Sweeney was a man who lived in the town who was a town skeptic. Is, is there a little roar? Can you hear me okay? Is there a little roar in it? Is everything okay? Can you hear me in the back? Michael, can you hear me? Okay, good. And Mr. Sweeney wanted to prove that this doctor that was in town, this new doctor, didn't have the answer to everything. Everybody said he's got the answer to everything, answer to everything. And Mr. Sweeney was going to prove this man wrong. So Mr. Sweeney went to the doctor and said, Doctor, he said, I've got a problem. My taste buds, I cannot taste anything. The doctor said, mm, let me think about that. He said, I believe your answer is found in jar number 47. So he went over to the counter, takes out jar number 47, and asked Mr. Sweeney to open his mouth. And he does so, and he places something on his tongue, and the man said, pff, pff. He said, that is gross. Mr. Sweeney said, it worked, didn't it? I've awakened your taste buds. Well, the man got mad and furious that no one was going to show him up. He knew this doctor wasn't everything he planned to be. So the man laid off for about a month, furious and mad, and he made him, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back, and I'm going to prove him wrong. He can't be that good a doctor. And he goes back in, he says to him, he said, uh, said, said doctor, said, I've lost my memory. <laughs> and he smiles real big and he says, uh, what can you do about that? And Mr. Sweeney, and he said to Mr. Sweeney, he said, I think the answer is in jar number 47. <laughs> and Mr. Sweeney said, uh, that stuff takes awful. He said, I've restored your memory. <laughs> you get it? <laughs> It worked. <laughs> and I pray this morning that some of the things I'll say will just kind of get you to taste again.
for the first time. Now, what would a preacher mention? Well, I would mention, first of all, uh, salvation. Now, you can't get saved again. If you've ever been saved once, you can't get born again twice. Can I get an amen to that? There have been times I would like to have. Amen. There have been times I've messed up. I wished I could have probably, but you can't one time. But you can taste again the first love. Like it was when you first got saved. Uh, I, we were, ben, ben Stoddard and I were visiting something yesterday. We met some elderly people today. Everybody we met yesterday in hospitals were just having a rough time. But when you ask them about their salvation, the older people would start smiling and say, I remember that day when Christ saved me. Can I just tell you, remember that time? Remember what salvation meant to you? Can you just remember? Would you just for a few minutes this morning uh, block everything out? And would you just revisit and get a, a glimpse of the, of, uh, again, of the first love that you had for Christ when you got saved? Oh, my, the joy of sins forgiven. Oh, my, the joy that you're going to heaven. Oh, my, the wonder that God would love you and forgive you and wash you from all your sins. I ask you to taste it again for the first time. The Bible says in Colossians 2, 6, As you therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk you in him. Rejoice this morning. Taste again this morning what Christ has removed you from. What he removed from us. Can I tell you, it won't probably make you happy, but it ought to this morning. Can I tell you, if you're saved this morning, there's no condemnation ever coming your way. Romans 8, 1, Neither is there any, neither, excuse me, there is therefore now no condemnation than what you're in Christ Jesus. Who walked not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Never, never condemned. Never, never condemned. A lady of this church, and I, I, I don't want you to take this wrong, paid one of the greatest compliments that she could ever say about this church. <clears throat> her, her daughter's here this morning. I was at a graveside where her uncle, or her, her, her uh, sister, her mother-in-law was being, being buried. And she walked over to me. She said, Pastor, said, I want to say something to you. I said, my daughter comes to your church. So they've come there for a long time. She said, I've been there several times to visit. And she said, I'm going to tell you something about Mount Pisgah. Didn't ask her to say anything. She said this. He said, everybody I've talked to said they can come there and not feel condemned. Can I tell you, all of us are a bunch of sinners. And all of us deserve hell. But thank God for a Savior that will love us and forgive us. And pick us up after we've fallen. Amen. There's no condemnation. Jesus said, I came not to condemn the righteous, but called sinners to repentance. What has he removed from us? He's removed from us the penalty of sin. The wages of sin is what? But the gift of God is what? Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be unto God, which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. He's removed from us the destination of hell. You know, if you had nothing else in the world to rejoice about this morning, you will rejoice in the fact you're not going to hell. Amen? You know, the, the disciples came back, 70 of them came back from Jesus, sent them out. And they came back and said, look here, said, Lord, they're probably going like this, you know. Said, Lord, said, the, the demons are subject to us. We can tell that devil to run off, he'll run off. We'll tell another to run off, he'll take off. And they're saying, Lord, they're, they're subject to us. And Jesus said, don't rejoice and the demons are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your name is written down in heaven. If you want something to rejoice about today, rejoice again. Thank God I can read my title clear this morning. Amen. Glory to God, I can look in the heavens and I see my name there written in the Lamb's book of life. Blessed and holy, Revelation 26. You see, that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power. They shall be priests of God and Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. So one more time, I want you to rejoice. I want you to taste again the Lord is good. Salvation, what he removes, and, what, and also what he gives you. Rejoice, in what he, if you have nothing to rejoice in, rejoice in what he gives you this morning. He gives you a personal relationship with him. Every day of my life, he's always available to talk to. Now, it's, it's, it, it's my sin that separates me from his, from his fellowship. But he's always accessible to me. Uh, for we're the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in Galatians 3, 26. I love this verse, Romans 8, 15 through 17. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption, whereby you cry, Abba, Father. The spirit itself bears with our spirits that we are the, excuse, excuse me. The spirit it bears with, with our spirits that we are the son, children of God. And if children, then we're heirs. We're heirs of God. We're joined ours with Christ. And so be we suffer with him, we shall also be glorified together with him. So rejoice in a personal relationship. Rejoice in the spiritual gifts he's given us. I'll not read those verses this morning. He's given you a spiritual gift. 
Every, every believer here has this gift that God gave you. He wants you to work it, make the body of Christ more effective. And if it's working, he's given those to you. He's given you an eternal life in Jesus Christ. He's kept us in the power of his hand. Jesus said, I give unto them eternal life. He said, never perish. He said, any man pluck them out of my hand. And he gives his own righteousness. Come on, help me out here this morning a little bit. None of us are good in ourselves, are we? The best of men are men, but they're best. But thank God that God himself made him to be sin for us. Jesus, who knew no sin, we might be made the righteousness of God in him. What a Savior. Taste and see one more time, the Lord is good. And can I get you this morning to taste and see that the Lord is good also in suffering in times of sorrow. Honestly, I believe in 47 years, 45 years of pastoring, 47 years of preaching, there's two times in my life it's hard for us to see the goodness of God. And it's when people are suffering. Or when someone unexpectedly dies. I was talking to Donnie this morning. You're never ready. My mother died after eight months of suffering of bone cancer. My dad died instantly. Never been sick a day in his life. You're never prepared. No matter when it comes your way. In those two times, it's hard for us to realize that God, God's love is there. I mean, there, there's some of you in this room, you've had to give up children. And I can't think of anything harder than that. If you know the story of Job, you've never forgotten if you heard it once. His own words were bitter to his taste. The words of his friend were bitter to his taste. The words of his wife were bitter to his taste. But I want you to listen to what Job said. I love this. He said, behold, I go forward. He's not there. He said, I go backward. I cannot perceive him. He said, on my left hand, where he doth work, but I cannot behold him. He doth hide himself on the right hand that I cannot see him. He said, I've looked every direction I can. He said, I, I can't see God in all of this. But when you can't see him, he knoweth the way that I take. And when he's tried me, I shall come forth as cold. My foot had held his steps. His way have I kept and not declined. Neither have I gone back from the commandments of his lips. I esteemed the word of his mouth more than my necessary food. He said, I couldn't find him, but thank God I can still find his word. <laughs> Amen. And there are going to be times in your life, I promise you, when you can't find God, you'll look for him, but you won't see him. You'll wonder where he is. But he's always accountable to his word. And he always keeps it. Can I get an amen to that? Man of sorrows, Jeremiah, weeping prophet. Listen to him, O Lord, thou knowest, remember me and visit me, revenge me of my persecutors, take me not away, take not away thy long suffering, hold, knowing that for thy sake I've suffered rebuke. Thy words were found, I did eat them, and thy word was to me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. He said, Lord, I couldn't, I had weeping, but I found your word, it was sweet to me. I cannot tell you the times I found God's word sweet to me. Let me give you something that David said. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, gave than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. More in them is thy servant warned in keeping of them. There is great reward. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Taste it in times of sorrow. I will, come on, help me. I will never leave thee. Did, there, did everybody hear that? I will never. One more time, I will. Taste and see. One more thing, just two more. Taste and see the Lord is good in service. When Diane was singing that song this morning, said, uh, talking about times we had to have faith. Excuse me for reliving something for a minute. 
I'll never forget years ago, my wife and I were going to Bible school. I was making $25 a week. I was pastoring Clax Gap Baptist Church. Brenda McGee went there at that time. Barbara Matney went there at that time. Perhaps some others here. And I was just a young, young boy. I was in my 20s. And uh, I was making $25 a week, man. I was bringing in the big bucks. I was going to Bible school. It cost me $20 a week for room and board. Don't you wish you could have $20 a week to feed you and your wife and live too? Amen? I'd go back to that, wouldn't you? <laughs> we did that. And a man came through that college and was preaching. And, man, he was preaching. And, and he, had, he, had, he, had, he had, uh, grabbed my attention. I'm going to move to Belpreo High and start a church. Would any young preacher boy want to go with me? Looked up at my wife. I said, let's go. We don't have any children. She said, okay, honey, if you want to go, we'll go. We did not have two pennies to rub together to our name. Everything we had was you could put in a four by eight U-Haul trailer and have half of it left empty. That's all we had. Went there, couldn't even find the place the man was when I got in town. Had the wrong address. I'd looked for the street that sounded like what he wanted, and I drove down the street long enough until I found his car. We got there, and uh, I worked 54 hours. Listen, hey, young people, listen to me. For 54 hours at a job and helped start this church and did visiting after the hours were up. Made a dollar and a quarter an hour. The only good thing about it, and this is, where I, this is why I look so healthy today, honestly, this is where I got it at. I worked at a cheese and meat factory. And all the cheese and, eat and meat was free. And I'm still feasting on it. Feasting. <laughs> I still have evidence to that. I worked there, I promise you. You don't get that stuff off easily. <laughs> And uh, we worked there, and God built a church there. We were running almost 300 in the wintertime in a tent with kerosene heaters, and people would come to hear you preach. But God was so good to us. I'm telling you a story. Just hang on with me. We'd have to pray money down to just feed our kids. But it, we, it came every time we needed it. Every time we needed it, it came. What I'm saying, young people, is this. I wish some of you this morning would decide here, I want to surrender to God. I want to be a preacher. I want to be a missionary. I want to give my life totally to Christ. Because I'll tell you this morning, even through all of that, I've tasted and seen the Lord is good. He's good. When it comes to serving Him. Some of you know what it is to sacrifice. Some of you give to sacrifice. You sacrifice when you give. Taste it again. The Lord is good. The Lord is good. I pray this morning some young person here will say, God's called me to preach. Some young lady will say, I want to surrender. Taste again. Taste it again and, and see how good it is to pass out a track to tell someone about Jesus. I never will forget the, my young days of witnessing were not the best in the world. I still don't know if I'm good at it or not. But uh, I heard about, did you hear about the doctor that heard the preacher preach and the preacher preached about you ought to be a witness. And he said, I know what I'm going to do. He said, the next, next person I see in my office in the morning, I'm a witness to him. A lady came in having trouble with her heart. And he got real nervous. He said, ma'am, if you died today, would you go to heaven? That's the wrong time to ask someone that question. Can I give an amen to that? It's a proper time, isn't it? But all oh, the joy again of passing out a track. I'm telling someone you love them. That Jesus loved them. My life was changed. I was a teenage child. I'd heard about God's love all my life, but one day I was working. My dad used to own a motel in town called Sunset Motel. We were tying the motel down. I was there working. Had to be a teenager. And two men came by that day who I have no idea who they were, had no idea where they came from, wouldn't know them from anybody else. And they stopped me while I was working, filthy, in my filthy clothes, tearing down a building you can imagine. They said, young man, can we have your attention for a moment? And I said, yes, sir. He said, we just came by here today to tell you. Jesus loves you. That's all they said and walked away. But that day, instead of being like in church when it went in here and went out there, that day it went down this way and took a hold. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You got something to share? If you got salvation, you ought to share it. Amen? I was over at Sears the other day, over at Knoxville, and I was buying me another treadmill. I like to watch them run. <laughs> I don't use them, boy, they run real fast. They burn up a lot of calories, it says, while you're watching them. So I actually use one, believe it or not. I just don't look like it. 
And I'm talking to the salesperson, have a good sell on, going to a free delivery, and they've knocked off about half the price. Man, I couldn't pass that up, even though I've got one. And uh, no, no, no payments for 18 months, interest free. Man, live. Phew, that's good, amen. So I'm there talking to the salesman, and a, and a lady walks around the corner and said, Sir, can I ask you a question? She and her husband, and I said, yes, ma'am. She said, I just heard you talking about these treadmills here. You've bought several. And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, which one do you like? And I said, well, I'm buying this one here. And she said, well, can you, t and here, and the salesman's sitting here, and I'm, 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 here, I'm a customer. And she said, well, tell me why you're buying this one. I said, I'm buying this one because the motor is a three, point, three horsepower motor. It's stability. It's built for those who are over 250 pounds. Some of y'all can use it. Many of y'all can use it. And also, it has a warranty with it. You buy the warranty, it's less than $300 for five years, and the warranty is wonderful. And, uh, and, and I looked over at the salesman, I said, did I get any commission? He said, no. <laughs> I bought the treadmill, walking out the door, and the man and woman were standing at the cashier. I was walking out. I said, did you buy one? And she said, the one you recommended. Can I tell you, you got something good to share, you got to share it. And can I tell you, I recommend Jesus to you. He's a wonderful Savior. Taste and see. Take it inside. Taste means to take inside. Taste, feeling is different. Tasting inside, it gives inside of you when you taste. Get Jesus inside of you. Last thing, but not the last point, is taste and see the Lord's good in fellowship. Listen to the Song of Solomon. He says, as the apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down under the shadow with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. It's good to fellowship with him, is it not? It's good on Monday, Tuesday, and the rest of the week. Can I get an amen? It's good in noontime and evening time. It's good in darkness or light. It's always good. On the mountains or in the valleys, it's good. It's good. Taste and see the Lord is good. Let me tell you, let me get, what you ought to do this, this year, you ought to make a commitment. You ought to make a resolution. I am resolved that you're going to try to be at church every time you can. It's good for you. You know, you're not going to get spoken to every time you come. It's going to be time you're going to sit here and you want to sleep or let your mind wander off. But you never know when something's going to speak to your heart and it's going to change your life. That's why you ought to be. Or to come. Well, let me give you a story. <clears throat> every year at a liberal University of Chicago Divinity School, a school supposed to be teaching preachers the truth of the Word of God, is they invited someone to come to speak to all their students and staff. They had a picnic outside, and this man would lecture them. And this man named Dr. Dr. Tillage came, and he lectured for two and a half hours, saying, I can prove to you there's no resurrection, that Jesus Christ did not really re resurrect from the grave. He said, I've read the Greek. He said, and I've read this book and that book. And he said, I conclude, therefore, there's no such thing as a historical resurrection of Jesus Christ, and it's only groundless emotion that you people go to church and say you have a personal relationship with someone who's never did, who, who died and never rose again. It's foolish for you to waste your time. He said, anybody have a question you want to ask? About 30, about 30 seconds passed. That's book, yes, sir, Jimmy. He said, uh, after about 30 seconds, he said, anybody got a question? About 30 seconds, a dark skinned preacher with light hair stood up and he said sir Dr. Tillage he said I got one question the crowd looks at him he looks at the doctor and he goes reaches his sack he pulls out an apple and he he said doctor he said Taste, sound good to y'all Wait till I get into this one. He said, Doctor, he said, I ain't never read any of them books you got. He said, I ain't never read any of that Greek stuff. He said, but I got a question I'd like to ask you. You don't mind? <laughs> Pretty good apple. <laughs> he said, well, what is that question you'd like to ask? He said, Doc. He said, this apple. I'm eating. He said, I want to know if it's sweet or if it's sour.
And the doctor said, I can't tell you. He said, I've never, I've never tasted that apple you're eating. He said, the old preacher said, you ain't never tasted my Jesus either. Go taste and see. The Lord is good. The Bible says in Hebrews 2, 9, that he, by the grace of God, tasted death for every man. See, there's a reason that Rick Smith changed the words of that song. Because he lives. See, we may not face death. We might not have to go fight that last battle. You know why? Because Jesus could come. And we could be changed in a moment, the twinkling of an eye. And all that have tasted Jesus Christ are going to rise and go be with him. You've taken him within, you know him. Interesting story. I don't have it on the screen. I'm going to just give you the reference. Luke 24. A man makes a supper. He invites all of his friends. Come over. My son's getting married. My son's getting married. Come over. Ha! <laughs> Can't do it. I've bought me a, a piece of land. I've got to go see it. Anybody here want to buy a piece of land you've never seen? Another one said, oh, I, can't, I just can't do it. I can't do it. said, I bought a team of oxen, and I have to go prove them. Anybody here buy a car without test driving it, maybe? Or even looking at it? The other one said, I married a wife, and I can't come. Probably the only guy who had a legitimate excuse. <laughs> excuse me. <laughs> The Bible says they all begin to make excuses. Then he said, go out in the highways and said, compel them to come in that my house may be full. And when I said, we went out, God, the house is full. He said, there's still room after we invite everybody. He said, go and invite more to come. I want them to come and taste of my meal. He said, because those which are bidden and did not come cannot taste of it. If you're going to taste of the goodness of God in eternity... You better make sure you've tasted the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Taste and see. The Lord is good. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. You're a gracious people to listen. We're not here to put on a show or a fanfare. Or I'm not here to see how many people I can get to do something. I'm here because I want to help you and I want to help, my, help me. Help me. Would you just be an honest enough on this first Sunday of the year? To admit with me, as I admit to myself, that my taste buds for some of the things of God need to be woken up again. For the scripture, for service, for faithfulness, for giving, for anything else. So many things I could say, but I didn't. But the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart. And you know what I'm talking about. You need to taste again some things of God. Before they ever start playing, before I ever give an invitation for someone else. I want to invite you as a believer this morning. You've tasted once. Would you come and ask God to let you taste again what you need to taste again? For